It's time to look to Saturday in the NBA. There are eight games on. We're going to look at all of them. Who do we stream in? How do we plan out the rest of this week, next week? And what do we do with Michael Bolton? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm excited to announce that I've just accepted a position with the G League Ignite for next season. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to PrizePicks.com. Slash locked on NBA. Use the promo code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free. We're available on all platforms. Now is the best time of year to get in and double bang. Watch the video, listen to the audio, thumb it up, subscribe, and of course, the old reliable notification bell. Great way of helping out as well. So what are we doing here? What are we talking about? We're looking at Saturday across the NBA. I saw someone left a comment on the daily streaming video yesterday talking about, man, your suggestions for streaming are all terrible. These Grizzlies guys only play one more game for the rest of the week. Yes. I know. That's true. There are certain segments of this show. We look specifically at the day. What is happening on this day? What are we doing on Saturday? There are eight games on. Who are the guys that we're looking at on Saturday? The back half of the show? Then we get in and look at the schedule. Where's the back-to-backs? How do we plan out that? And then we finish off with category-specific moves specifically for one day. I can't... It's very, very... The shows would go for years if I was like, okay, well, now we're looking... If you're looking for assists over the next two days, you do this, and it would just take forever. So we look at specifically the day. Then we transition into planning out your schedule. Then we go back to give you the final wraparound of guys to add for specific things for the one day. I thought that was relatively clear, but sometimes it is worth um, providing clarification on stuff that we do. So, first game. It is an early one. 1 p.m. Eastern. That is the old 4 a.m. over here. Safe to say I won't be getting up to watch it. Although, who knows? Maybe I'll just be awake anyway. It is Brooklyn. It is New York. These these teams have identical schedules. They play Saturday. And then they go the... What can we call that? The garbage next week? The four-game garbage. The Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. It's four games. Maybe it's not the garbage. It's something that looks good on the outside, but it's rotten on the inside. Oh, I had some really like slanderous things that I could have called that. I won't. But, you know, think of it yourself. Something that looks good on the outside, but it's just disgusting when you actually get past the initial layer. Um, yeah, they go the four games, but they're all on stinking days. Dorian Finney-Smith missed the last game. He has just as I am hitting the record button. That's what happens. You can't avoid it in the NBA. I could record a show. Unless I do a 24-7 live stream, I won't. Unless I do a 24-7 live stream, you're never going to be up to date on stuff because it changes all the time, which is unfortunately unfortunate, of course. Um, we did get the update that Dorian Fitty smith is off the injury report, but old mate Dennis Smith has popped up as probable. That's not a big deal. He's going to play, that means. But what we do know is that the Jedi, Ojin Anobi is out, Julius Randle is out, Mitchell Robinson is out. I reckon there's a small chance that Mitchie is back next week. I wouldn't. Wouldn't bank on huge amounts of playing time. I wouldn't even bank that. He, I would bank that Julius Randle doesn't return next week. I would say there is a small chance that Mitch is back, but I, yeah, I don't think it's going to be in a uh, in a sizable role. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, so we'll find we'll find out exactly how that all uh, all plays out as we as we move forward and uh, and try to look at what we need to look at. Um, I don't know why I'm waffling there. So what do we need to look at in this one? Well, Cam Johnson started with Dorian Finney-Smith out last game, and he played big minutes. But DFS is back. So where does Johnson go? Because 26 minutes of Cam Johnson is in the biggest, like, I don't really care type scenario. I just don't. He's not rosterable as a must-roster guy in that scenario. And for the Knicks, well, we wanted to see what would happen. They're going up against a big team, the front court. Porter, Gordon, Jokic. Do they go back to the big sneeze or do they realize he is bad? The answer is they realized he is bad and they went with 44 minutes of Juice McBride. So I'm going to guess 
going up against Josh, um, going up against not against Josh Hart, against Dorian Finney-Smith and Cam Johnson and Mikhail Bridges playing the three and the four, that they'll be okay with Juice McBride out there. So your pressure to Chua goes back to being a backup big man behind Hartenstein with a little bit of power forward minutes. So that brings us to McBride, who played a lot of minutes last game. The Knicks, again, that's not a good schedule. You can stream him in for Saturday, but like I'm going to say all the way through, maybe this is a blanket statement. Would you use Juice McBride on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday next week? Would he fit your active lineup? And the other question is, is that if Ananobi is back, and there's a chance that he is back, McBride's not going to be worth it anyway. So it's fine to use him on Saturday, absolutely fine. But longer term, no. Dennis Schroeder is getting boosts because of players that are out, but like he is barely holding on. And honestly, again, will you start Schroeder next week with four games on high-volume days? And a lot of the time, the answer will be no, meaning he becomes extremely expendable, even though he is getting these boosts with the absence of Simmons. So yeah, just it's always this time of the year, playoffs, you've got to be really, really cautious of when you're making moves, what moves you're making, and an honest appraisal of if you're going to actually use the bloke or not. Always remember though, if you say he's your, your 11th guy, the chances are that one of your top 10 gets hurt and then you slide that guy in anyway. So it's more like he's your 12th best guy, which if you're in the playoffs, if you're in the finals, your team might be that strong where Schroeder is your 12th best player. And then that's probably not as much worth it. The next game up, we're talking Sacramento Kings. The At least they won't have a disgusting loss in this one because it is not a back-to-back, but they could still have a disgusting loss, I guess. They're up against your Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. The Kings have an okay schedule next week. They play Saturday here, and then they go Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Now, obviously, that is three games in four nights for your Kings. Monday, high-volume day, fringe guys you might not play, but you will on Tuesday. Good value there. The Magic, dreadful, dreadful schedule here. Saturday, yes, and then they don't play until Wednesday, high-volume day. Play again Friday, high-volume day. The only good thing is they get a game on Saturday. That is for those of you who are calendrically inclined, is eight days from now. Well, actually, it's nine days from now because I'm recording this on Friday. And that will be the next time that a fringe magic might actually slide into your lineup. Hmm. Fan of Pants is going to be out. Trey Lyles is going to be out. Sasha Vazenkov might be be back for the Kings. And Gaz Harris missed the last game. They said after the game, nah, he's fine. The Magic love lying about injuries. They love giving early injury reports, but they love lying about them as well. So I I think Gaz will be okay, but... You know, anytime Gary Harris gets a lower body injury and leaves a game, you have to be a little worried. I want to watch Keegan Murray, mainly just so I can more gain an assessment on how I view him as a player. Not very highly. Well, not as highly as others, but yeah, he's had some good moments, but it's also been rough over this period of time. And then Franz Wagner, who has also been bad for the last two months, finally broke out in the last one. Is that what we can expect? Let's hope so. Who is boosted? Well, last game, we thought Keon Ellis would be boosted, and theoretically he is, because he went from playing zero minutes to being a starter. But he also played only 20 minutes and got one steal. Is 20 minutes the relevant expectation or is 29-30? Is one steal with two points or four steals with nine points more realistic? I still think we hold. Alice, especially with a Tuesday uh, low volume coming up. And then Jalen Suggers continues to play really well. They've put him into the primary point guard role. I still think they need better options in the offseason. And I don't think they're on this roster. It's not Fultz. It's not, maybe it is Anthony, but it's not because they don't believe that. And it's not Mr. Black. But Suggs at the moment is putting up really strong numbers. And I'm here for it. I like it. I like John Sucks. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS as well. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. It's demon time on Price Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn 10 into a thousand dollar dues. Demons and Goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at Price Picks. The squares marked with the red demons or the green goblins get you different payouts, and you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. It's easy to play. You make your picks, you submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. It's just looking at the stats and saying more or less. Now, you can obviously, and I recommend you do, put more research into it, but if you want to chuck one in there and slide it in real quick, you can get it done and finished off within 60 seconds. So go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA and use the code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA. The code is LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, we should slide across to the next one now. We are talking about your mates, the Charlotte Hornets. Haven't seen them for a while, have we? They are back 
up against the Atlanta Hawks. And there was an update to this injury report just right now as well. We'll talk about that in a sec. The Hornets have a not good schedule. Obviously, they haven't played since Tuesday. They're back here for Saturday. And you, you, they do, you look at it and go, well, they do play four games. That's awesome. Yeah, but they're all on the stinking days. They're on the the bad ex, the good interior, bad ex. What is it? Good exterior, bad interior. Anyway, bad. It's bad, and that leads you to the question: like, if you did drop Brandon Miller, if you did drop Miles Bridges, totally defensible positions, are they worth re-adding? Is Brandon Miller a startable guy on all those days for you? Miles Bridges probably is. Miller debatable, probably, but debatable. The Hawks Saturday. We know that. We're talking about Saturday. Next week, four games. Much better than Charlotte's, though. Monday, Wednesday, the same, but then they go Thursday, Saturday. Now, the annoying thing is... I will talk, actually, let's talk Hornets. You'll be stunned to know. Like I, I, I went out on a limb. I ri- risked my professional reputation to say that LaMelo Ball was going to be out. Thankfully, the Hornets came through and gave me the update that he is officially out, so we're good there. No Seth Curry, no Cody Martin. Bryce McGowan's has been ruled out as well. For the Hawks, Jalen Johnson's out. Trey Young is out. Kobe Bufkin's still out. Adrian Griffin Jr. is out. Muhammad Gay is out. And then, from the top rope, Anyeka Okongwu is doubtful with his toe. Oh, no. It's not back-to-back. It's not anything. Why is he doubtful? We were thinking maybe they'd increase the minutes limit. Maybe we'd get Okongwu playing power forward with Jalen and Sadiq out. Mm, nope, 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 nope. So, Okongwu is going to miss Saturday. To me, it means no game Saturday, no game Sunday. A limited minutes... Maybe not even going to play a Kongwu on Monday. A limited minutes, maybe not going to play on Wednesday. I would say he's back Wednesday, but he's definitely going to be under 20 minutes. Is that worth holding? Is a Kongwu worth holding as much as I love him? Is he worth holding? Now you go and re-add him for Thursday, Saturday. But he's not playing both Wednesdays, Thursday. We know that. He's definitely not playing. Honestly, he won't play Saturday. And then out of the next three games, he's missing at least one. And then limited minutes in uh, the other two. That is not a hold. As much as I love Anyeka Okongwu, John Armstrong, fire up the vocal cords. Get that garbage out of here! So what are we watching on the Charlotte side? Miles Bridges, he has really struggled. It's without LaMelo Ball, as much as you want to talk. There's the Melo Ball stuff. I don't know. It's getting really annoying to me. I don't know the bloke. Never met him in my life. have no association with LaMelo Ball at all. I've got a pair of his shoes. He's got two pairs. I think Rick and Morty's and the digital camo Melo Ball ones. All right, that's fine. My, my son's got like three pairs of him. Plays tennis in them. That's cool, right? That's my only association with him. But there are a lot of assumptions made about LaMelo Ball. Oh, the man's unserious. Doesn't care about basketball. He just doesn't want to play. He's soft. He's weak. He's never going to lead a winning team. Okay. Have you seen the team without him? Have you seen how much better they are with him out there? Like, uh, there are just a lot of... Oh, well, he's never going to be healthy because his brother's got knee problems. All right. Just a lot of wild assumptions that get made about this guy. And I hate being put in the position to defend the man who's played 22 games this season. But I, there's just a lot of stuff that goes around about him that is just, I think, unfair. Anyway, back to Miles Bridges. He's struggling without LeMay. Like He's just not doing anything. His efficiency is well down. He's playing a ton of minutes, and that's the only reason he's really getting by. But let's see if we can get something good happening, mate. For the Hawks, it, it was an Ekra Kongwu that was on my radar and I wanted to watch, but guess not. Vasily Misic keeps getting the boost without LeMay there. Trey Mann gets the boost as well, while DeAndre Hunter is starting. Finally. So you know what you're going to get. You're going to get shot attempts. Now, either 30% of them going in or 60% going in, and you'll be lucky to snag four combined rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. This is DeAndre Hunter, but when, now that you've got a starting job with more shots, we obviously take a crack there. Toronto and Washington is the next game. It is. Um, in Washington, it is your Raptors who are coming in on a back-to-back. They go Saturday, and then next week, they don't have a very good one at all. Monday, Wednesday, Sunday. That's really bad for those fringe players. For the Wizards, they have an also bad schedule. Saturday is great, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. We know that Emmanuel quickly is out for Friday's game. I'm going to expect that he does not play in this game. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me that he would then he would miss Friday's game quickly and then travel with the team for a one-game road trip to Washington um, when he's dealing with the personal issues. Like there is uh, that it has to be. He's not playing. No way. Ron Barrett's definitely not playing. And then out of nowhere, you're going to be shocked to know this that. Gary Trent popped up with questionable tag. One of the things you look for on injury reports, the I'm not going to call them fake injuries because everyone is banged up. Everyone is dealing with some soreness, right? But when you want to put a cover in 
to sit a guy randomly. And one thing we'll know is I'm going to have to assess this, in, assess this at the end of the season. We talked about it a lot in the preseason. This show is just all sidebars at the moment. We talked about a lot of, about this in the preseason, saying that the NBA 65-game rule and the player participation policy and all that nonsense that they did as hype or overreaction to stuff, the thing we wanted to watch, because it was a little bit put in there about you know, Clause G right down the bottom, is that talking about guys getting shut down at the end of the season for fake injuries, they're going to be monitoring it. So said, oh, that's interesting. We'll see what impact that has on fantasy. And as much as we want to complain that our teams are getting hit with injuries at this point of the year, man, we have to end our season six weeks earlier. Who's, is anyone actually like actually sh- like shut down? I guess you could say Lamello, but that was in January. So I'm going to guess there's some level of seriousness there. But the guys that, I guess the, the one at the moment that we just don't know is ever coming back is Jeremy Grant. But Larry Markin that was giving the indication, and then he returned, and you know, DeAndre Ayton missed time with a hand injury, then he returned. And Kyle Kuzma and Denny Avdu missed time for the Wizards, and then they returned. And, like, does quickly come back here? I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot of ins and outs all the way through until about, you know, the 10th of April, 5th of April, or something like that, versus the way that they did it last season where they ended early. Grant's the outlier. The Ides of March gets him every year. But everyone else, it's a little bit of in and out, which almost is more frustrating for us because we can't then jump onto the Justin Champagnes or we can't jump onto the Jordan Warriors fully because the starters come back and forward all the time. Off topic. Gaz, now the next part I want to say is injury designations. When you see a soreness or a tendonitis appear, that's a cover for a fake injury. Strain, different. Strain, legitimate injury. Tendonitis, it's a little bit of the irritable bowel syndrome of NBA injury reporting. You could always find an excuse to put it there. Sorry to any of you suffering from irritable bowel syndrome. It's one of those things that does get overused by people in terms of self-diagnosis as a former medical professional. Um, wow, this show's just off the rails. Yeah, so Gary Trent, just just watch that one because we had another one of those, say, with DeAndre Ayton popping up with knee tendonitis. Right, just knee tendonitis. Just, just got to watch those ones. Um, DJ Carton is out again on Friday, so maybe he plays Saturday. As for Gaz, I don't know whether he's even playing Friday or on Saturday. Marvin Bagley the third, the big fella is back from a back injury. Is he a must grab? I don't know. In a category league, how good would I feel about starting Bagley, returning from his second back injury, where he might split minutes and then a high volume schedule? I don't. Yeah, I think he's a tentative look at guy. But obviously, it kills Rashawn, Rashawn Holmes. Jordan Poole has popped up with a contusion. Well, that's another one to throw in with the 10 nighters. Contusion. Hip contusion. He's questionable. Tyus Jones is out. Eugene Marie is out. Andrew Shamit is out. Jones and ba- he's back. I'm a little worried about him. He is a upcoming free agent. So there is a chance that maybe he is done for the year. But we'll see. Like, maybe he returns as well. But And then Jordan. If Jordan Poole is out, then we are... Having to give a lot to Kiss, but he'll do nothing. But that obviously does help Champagne, and it really helps the man that I've gone this is Jared Butler. So we want to watch what Bagley does for the Wizards, but the guys are getting boosted. Bruce Brown gets the minutes boost, but he doesn't always produce. Like he well, might play 25 minutes. But this is a game that is going to be down to the wire in terms of who tries to lose the most. So how much Javon Freeman Liberty are we going to see? How much Mamadou Gay is going to be out there? How much dick are we going to get? Like so much of this is going to be all over the shop. What about for the Wizards? Do we get to pop the bubbles? Do we get a lot of sandwich, Patrick Baldwin Jr.? Do we get like the ultimate tank piece in the NBA? Does John Davis play 30 minutes? This is the game to lose. So the one to watch is Jared Butler in Washington. Because Jones is out, and if Poole is out, Butler will have to start. And then you would want to stream him. And that is the longest that anyone has ever spoken about a late March Raptors-Wizards game. I am uh, fairly certain. Apologies. Fast forward through. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Do you have the passion, drive, and patience to bring home the fantasy championship? Do you have the passion, drive, and patience to listen to 10-minute soliloquy on the Raptors and the Wizards? Well, you are if you're here. You need that passion to keep your ride or die alive as well. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your prop, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. 
Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers. Okay, maybe we should go quicker. You can watch this on faster speed. You can listen on faster speed. It'll be okay. The Boston... Oh, what am I going to talk about here? The Boston Celtics. Load management legends. Just, we're going to be dealing with these. Now, they don't have another back-to-back after this for a while, but we are going to see these problems. They are so far ahead, and it makes complete sense for them not to push their players. The Celtics play Saturday, and they do have a good schedule next week. They only play Monday. So it looks bad, but they play Monday, and then they do Thursday, Saturday. There are only three streaming days next week, and they've got two of them. And with the penchant for sitting blokes, you might get some opportunities there. The Bulls go Saturday, then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. That is the stock standard schedule of basically half the teams, and it's not very good. We don't, at this point, have any idea really what is going to happen. But I will say this, as I have just jumped onto this game, I've gone to look, and five minutes ago, the Celtics announced the injury report for Friday. So we get a little bit of news. So who is in or out? Well, Gaz Trent actually just got announced out for Friday for the Raptors as well. So yeah, there you go. Stiffness. Hmm. Um, Sam Hauser is in. Cool. Um, Jalen Brown is in. Christos Porzingis is in. Jason Tatum is out. Hmm. Al Horford is out. So Horford will play on Saturday. Tatum will play on Saturday. Porzingis will be out on Saturday. Jalen Brown will be out on Saturday is my guess. The big question then comes from Drew Holiday and Derek White. Because White is playing on Thursday, or sorry, on Friday, and Holiday is out. So does Holiday play on Saturday and White sits out? I think that's distinctly possible. So here where we are. You will have, I'm guessing, no Porzingis, no Brown, maybe no Hauser on Saturday, and maybe no White, but you will get Horford and Tatum in, and you might get Holiday in. Got it? Cool. For the Bulls, Julian Phillips is out. We do have both the Rabbit Hunter, Alex, Car- Alex Caruso, and... Um, Alec Jacoby White listed as probable for the Bulls, but that doesn't really matter that much. As we said, Boston's on the back-to-back. There is another opportunity here for Luke Cornett. There's another opportunity for Peyton Pritchard. Uh, Sam Hauser, I don't think he's going to go. Hey, by the way, Gary Harris, who was uh, said to be fine, he's dealing with a plantar fascia strain. He's officially questionable. There's zero chance he's playing, by the way. Um, all right, so Peyton Pritchard is going to get a boost there because I, I, I would guess that Holiday... Holidays, Brown, or White, one to two of those three are out on Saturday, is my guess. Well, for Chicago, Ayodosumu, he's absolutely flying, but we are in we are in the zone, guys. Statmuse tweeted it out. Ayodosumu's last three games, 30 points, seven assists, 57% from the field, 60% from three, 100% from the line. The biggest kiss of death you'll ever get. We know what it means. It doesn't mean that, oh, wow, look what he's doing without Kobe White. It means, look at the shooting. They love it. The normies, the non-fantasy fools, love it. But we all know, go, oh no. Oh no, there's no way. Like, it is falling off. Whether it's this game or Monday, I don't know. But there is going to be a stark regression coming. You do not continue to shoot 60% from three. And that is what Ayodosumu is currently doing. It's got nothing to do with who was in or out. It's just a gigantic hot streak. The Phoenix Suns and the San Antonio Spurs. Cool, 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 cool. The Suns play on Saturday and then they play Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So not only do they have no low, uh, no high, no quality games, no low volume days, but they end their week on Friday next week. So if that's your fantasy finals, you're dropping Durant. Everyone, everyone goes after Friday. The Spurs play on Saturday, then they go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. At the moment, the only guys in the injury report are Josh Iacoggi. He's not probably going to play. And Damian Lee is out. The Spurs come in on the back-to-back. They've been playing their guys through the back-to-back. Even Zach Collins, who's dealing with a concussion, is probable for Friday. Do you know that there is a, a, a narrative around certain things? Women Yama, for example. Where people just assume that he's sat every back-to-back. I had someone like angrily arguing with me. Talking about, how hey, you never talk anything about Women Yama. And he, the fact that he sat 75% of all back-to-backs this season... He sat three out of 11, right? But there's this understanding that he's just been out every game and sits every back-to-back. Facts have a funny way of proving you wrong. They do it to me often. But we just get this idea and it gets spouted everywhere. We had this preconceived notion heading into the year of something being true, and it's not. We'll see. 
not to say that they won't sit blokes on this back-to-back, but that hasn't been happening. I want to watch Yusuf Nurkic, the king of getting hit in the head. His numbers are really down at the moment. The efficiency is completely useless. Honestly, with that bad of a schedule, Nurkic and his production makes you go, well, would I want to even start him? And like, does that mean I hold on? Like, that's I think you do, but it's in the discussion. Eric Gordon got the boost last game over Royce O'Neal. Is that going to be a regular thing? We'll find out. Well, it's hard to find a Spurs boost guy unless there is someone that gets injured, but Devin Vassell seems to be just getting the bulk of those minutes the majority of the time. The next game could be an epic one as well. It is the Jazz and the Rockets. And by epic, I mean there could be just foolishness all over the shop here. Both teams have the identical schedule. Both play on Saturday. Then they go the four games next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So no qualities at all. Johnny Collins missed the last game, second game of the back-to-back. Pretty weird that he played the first one. His facial contusion was totally okay. And then for the next game, it it ruled him out. Just amazing stuff. If you're going to lie to us on the injury report, Utah, sit him on the first one. It really just makes a lot more sense. Versus saying he came back from the injury, then he he was too tired from his face bruised to play the next one. Just make him play the first one. Make him sit the first one and say the extra 24 hours got him back for the next one. Jordan Clarkson, I'm just going to guess that his groin strain keeps him out for a little bit of time here. We are not holding on to him. And then Cam Whitmore remains out. No indication about Larry Markkinen and whether that quad has flared up uncontrollably. So I do want to watch Taylor Hendricks because his usage is very low when Markkinen is out there. I really do believe in Hendricks as a player, but it is a little bit harder to get full reliability from him. And you wouldn't start him through four games next week if Markkinen plays. For the Rockets, last game, Jock Landale was fantastic. Big minutes. It's a nice matchup against Johnny Collins or Walker Kessler, so maybe they do need him. Every other game, Amen Thompson keeps getting under 30 minutes, but it's not always Landau that steps up. So does the jockster play those 26? Because if he does, then I'm in. Colin Sexton's getting the Clarkson role, so 32 off the bench. Gigantic usage. Numbers are great. Love it. And then Amen Thompson obviously gets the boost, but Udoka is putting the handbrake on. He's keeping him at 27 or 28, around that mark. Less than all the other starters. It's a little frustrating, but that's what's happening. Finally, we get to the last game of the day. What the hell am I going to talk about here? Denver and Portland. It's the situation where one team, there's nothing to say Denver, and the other team where there's nothing to say because I don't know. Actually, there is something to say about Denver. They both play Saturday, obviously, because they're playing each other. Then Denver goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The Blazers, bad schedule, three games, ends on Friday, all high-volume days. Bad. But for Denver... The last like minute of their last game on Thursday, Jamal Murray sprained his ankle. After the game, Dr. Michael Malone said, yeah, like, he just sort of rolled his ankle. Uh, we know, Mike. We saw it. That's not good. This man has missed multiple games through a sprained ankle this season. So I don't know where we're going to sit with this. Now, they are against an absolutely trash team who does not want to win. Does the headmaster sit this one? I would have to suggest possibly yes, but I don't know that. Zeke Nagy's missed the last couple with a back issue. Then we get on to the Blazers. Jeremy Grant remains doubtful, or maybe they've ruled him out for Friday. I'm going to put him doubtful again for Saturday. I'm not sure that hamstring is going to recover in time. The snowman, the sofa king, DeAndre Ayton, just popped up with a late questionable tag. Not ideal. Although, the Blazers, there are teams that do things differently, right? The Blazers, the day before, put Anthony Simons as a late questionable tag on the injury report, and then he played. And I think they've done that three times for Simons this season. Most other teams, if you get a late questionable tag four hours before game time, that guy is not playing, no chance. The Blazers don't view it that way. So I don't know why they bother, but they don't do it that way. They literally one game ago did it for Simons and he played. So while Aiton has appeared on the injury report as questionable for Friday out of nowhere with whatever they called it, elbow tendonitis or something, something foolish. What do they call it? Um, trying to find it. The Grizzlies did it with Jake LaRavia today as well. So I reckon that he might be out. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Aiton, I'd say there's a decent chance of playing. I'm going to just go out in the limb and put Anthony Simons on the injury report as questionable. He's only probable for Friday, but it is a back-to-back, so maybe. Matisse Thibel still questionable for Friday, so I'm going to put him questionable for Saturday. I don't think Brogdon's coming out, coming back this season, so I'm going to... I don't know if he's coming out. I don't know if he's coming back this season, so this is the last time I'm going to put him on this injury report. I'm just going to expect that he's out. And Shaden Sharp, the reports still are... Well, the, the word is that Sharp will return at some point late, uh, yeah, the last week of the year. But you know, we're not there yet. Uh, for Denver, Aaron Gordon's the guy that I want to watch. He's been decidedly mid. I don't think that he's a drop, but pay attention. How many of the four games next week will you start Aaron Gordon? Because if it's two, then he's a two-game player, and that's not that good. 
Um, Delano Banton's really the one that we want to watch. He's the guy that I prefer over Chris Murray, over Tamani Kamara, over Jabari Walker, not over Scoot Henderson, and his minutes can fluctuate, but say Simons, Aiton, Grant are all out, which is possible. Banton's going to have a chance to really fly, to pop off, as they say. I should have done this at the start of the show, so we're 30 minutes in, and I apologize. Brandon Ingram, um, MRI revealed a nose, nose bruise? No, 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 a knee bruise. He's out for at least two weeks. We talked about this on yesterday's recap, saying there was zero chance he was playing on Friday, and it looked like he'd miss a little bit of time. Thankfully, we don't have a season ender. It could be a regular season ender. And as always, stash him in IL, but that's minimum two weeks. That is probably, for most of you, your fantasy playoffs, let's be honest. If you play default Yahoo, what are the chances he comes back and plays before that April 7th final game of the season? It's zero, basically. So in mo- for most of you, like that's a clear drop. With him out, they'll just move Trey Murphy into the starting lineup. So Murphy's minutes go up. CJ McCollum's minutes go up. Um, Herb Jones's minutes go up. Importantly, CJ McCollum's usage goes through the roof. CJ McCollum's assist rate goes sky high. Zion Williamson's, in the minutes without Ingram this season, Zion's got like an 11 assist per 100 possession number, I think. That is huge. So Zion's assists are going to go up. Who's going to fill in more minutes? Najee Marshall is going to play more. Um, I don't think it impacts Larry Nance's minutes at all. Like I said yesterday, I think if anything, it means Larry could go down because they might need a little bit more offense out of Valanchunas, meaning fewer opportunities for Nance to play. But I'm not sure on that one. But it definitely doesn't mean that it's a big increase for Nance because Nance does not play small forward or power forward at all, ever. So we don't worry about that. Najee Marshall is a guy that gets the big minutes boost. You'll get Jordy Hawkins being a more regular part of the rotation. You'll get more minutes for Jose Alvarado because Ingram plays as a point guard a lot of the time. So you'll get more Alvarado, more Marshall off the bench, which honestly, with the way this, the Pelican schedule has played out, even though it's annoying to lose Ingram, it's terrible and it's bad for them and it's bad for the NBA, it's actually good for us in fantasy because it means that the value of the guys that we streamed in are Najee, a Jose, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, for those of you in shallow leagues, it all goes up at this point in the year, and it is the best time for Pelicans' values to go up from a fantasy perspective. The other one that I wouldn't normally give two thoughts to is Stanley Amude. But he's out for the season with an ankle fracture. And the reason why that's important is because Asar Thompson's out for the season, Isaiah Stewart's out for the season, and Simona Fontecchio's still dealing with a toe issue. So Amude was going to play 30 minutes a night. He's not now. So who the hell is going to start for this team? Well, it's probably going to have to be old mate Tosan Ebonwan, who is a two-way guy, and I believe is going to be pushing up against it in terms of limitations for games. I think we'll be okay, but it's going to be close. But he's not a 12-team ad, but I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up having stream value, Tosan. Then the other spot, like, this maybe means that we add Chemezi Metu because I think Tosan and Metu might start, at least until Fontecchio comes back, and then it'll be Fontecchio and Tosan. And then you've got Fournier. Well, I'd love it if Grimes was able to play, but he can't. The other one is Troy Brown, who's on this team and still exists. Just watch that and wouldn't rush to add him. Metu and Tosan are the guys that I'm paying a little bit more attention to at this point. So yeah, sorry, it took so long to get there. Let's look at scheduling now. Back-to-back, nobody. No one on the Saturday, Sunday, back-to-back. Al. What about the next four days? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, heading into week 22. There's one team, the Sacramento Kings, that play three games in four nights. And you'll notice I'm trying to do a few little things to really identify some stuff, but also to remind me when I'm talking. I put the Kings in the little little font there. They do play three games in four nights, but we know that these are not um, uh, the streaming days necessarily. So they don't have three streaming days in four nights. Yes? They don't have three streaming days in four nights. They've got two, which is good and yeah, solid. And the three games are nice. Three games is great for Fox, for Sabonis. But when you're talking a Keegan or a Barnes or an Alice, like you probably won't start those guys on Monday. You will on Saturday and will on Tuesday. Their two quality games is the same as the Warriors' two quality games. The Lakers, the Heat, the Bucks, the Pelicans, and the Thunder, despite the fact that they have three games overall. So three and four is nice, but it's not everything. And there are three teams who have one game in the next four nights. Minnesota. Orlando, and you'll notice in lowercase, or small lowercase, what do they actually call that thing? It's like lowercase, but all caps. I don't know. The Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have one game in the next four nights. Zero quality games. So, the values of a Luke Kennard, John Concha, Gigi Jackson, Santi Aldama, whoever, 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 those fringy players, 
And I don't even know if Bain's going to be available. Like, you will not play these guys really at all. So, yes, the man who told me the Grizzlies are bad suggestions after Friday, they are up. They are bad because you just can't really use them. Whereas the Wolves and the Magic, they've only got one game in four nights, which is bad, but at least there's a stream ability there and they play that one game, which is the same as someone like from the Hawks who played two games total, but it's only one quality game. I know it can get annoying this part of the year. Six games, six days. Which teams play four games in six nights? The Atlanta Hawks play four games in six nights. That's cool. But they only, they're not the strongest schedule. They are by the fact that they're the only team playing four games, but only two of them are quality games. It's great for DeJounte Murray. It's solid enough for Clint Capella. It's probably good enough for Bogdan Bogdanovich. But if you're trying to get a DeAndre Hunter, if you're trying to see if a Kongu is playing like we talked about already, only two quality games. The ones we really look at, the Pelicans and the Bucks, only have three games total, but they're all on the low volume days. So they're the ones we look at. Leaky Beasley, Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance, Snaji Marshall, Bobby Portis, maybe Jay Crowder, Pat Connaughton. Three games. Because on the other side, there's five teams who play two games in the next six nights. One of them is Miami. And Miami's schedule is fine. Two games, both streamable. Then you've got Dallas, Memphis, Minnesota, and Orlando who have uh, only one quality game. And then over the next six nights, the Grizzlies are in the middle there. And they have zero in six nights. That makes it impossible with a lot of these guys. It's they're just you're never going to use them over the next six nights. And again, we look at the next seven days. There are 21 teams that play four games, and there's Memphis who plays two games in seven nights. And Memphis playing two games in seven nights, that's a two game week. We hate two game weeks, and none of them run quality game days. Shocking schedule. What about the next eight days? We're talking five games, eight nights. We've got four teams that have five games in eight. Atlanta, the Pelicans, the Bucks, and the Celtics. Atlanta have got five games in eight nights. This is true. They've got three quality games. I don't know why I put them little. I didn't put Boston little. They've got three. Qu- oh, no, I know I did. Because they've got five total Atlanta, which is great. But only three quality games. The Pelicans have four games in eight nights, all quality. The Bucks have four games in eight nights, all quality. The Celtics have four games in eight nights, three quality. So a four-game period from the Celtics is better than a four, or equal to a five-game period from the Hawks. And then the three-game in eight-night crew, Miami has got three games in eight nights, bad schedule, but they've got two qualities. Then you've got Dallas, Memphis, Minnesota, and Toronto, who all only have one quality game in their three games. Terrible schedules for the teams with some streaming value like Toronto and Memphis. Um, lastly of the schedule plays, we look at the last nine days. If we look at teams that have got four quality games in the next nine nights, it's the Bucks and the Pelicans, and they stand alone. That takes you to the end of week 22. There are a lot of teams that have five games over that time frame. Half the league has five games from this Saturday through to the following Sunday, but only Milwaukee or New Orleans have four, four quality games during that um, time frame. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah, And they've only got four games total, but they've got four quality games, whereas there's 16 teams playing five who have nowhere near the stream ability. And there are 20 teams, 20 teams from Saturday through to the end of week 22 that have one quality game. Your streaming is vitally important. Two-thirds of the league has one streamable game through the next week and two days. Now, Saturday, who can we stream in? Yahoo points. Bruce Brown, Scoot Henderson, Delano Banton. They're more of your higher rostered guys around the 50 mark. Jonte Porter, Jordan Wara, Corey Kispert. They're below 30, deeper leagues. A lot of Toronto, a lot of Portland. This is how this is going to roll. We know this. Um, ESPN points. Bruce Brown. Corey Kispert, the brown one, I'm really scared about that. Corey Kispert, Juice McBride, Trey Mann, Jonte Porter, DeAndre Hunter. You'll notice Kispert, McBride, Mann, and Porter all italicized there, meaning they're all under 30% roster, so available in some deeper formats too. So quite a good selection of ESPN points stream guys there. For the category leagues, if you're streaming in the points category, we are looking at DeAndre Hunter and Corey Kispert. For threes, I'm looking at the big fellas back, Davis Bertans. I don't expect his role to change. They just haven't played forever. 
And then Corey Kispert's a three-point streamer as well. For big man stats, for rebounds, we do go to the big fella, Big Dick Nick. He is back. Nick Richards, he's available over 50% of leagues. And then Taylor Hendricks. I know that it's not super exciting, but seven or eight rebounds, totally possible. For blocks, John Isaac and Jonte Porter could very easily get you up to four. That's a great, great upside play. For guard stats, we're looking at assists and we are looking at steals. Assists, it's very easy. It's Vasily Misic and then Scoot Henderson. For steals, it is Keon Ellis and then Catavius Caldwell-Pope, who's available in leagues, rightfully so. But when you're looking for steals, he's there. And lastly, we look at percentages. Who's your field goal percentage stream? Nick Richards and then Luke Cornett with a lot of the Celtics weirdness. And then for free throws, we've got Scoot Henderson and Jordan Wara. But there's just lots of weird opportunities appearing. Look at Peyton Pritchard's and that in Boston. Look who's in and out. Boston's, we get some of, somewhat of an idea of what they're going to do. Given what they've done on Friday, there's just going to be weird stuff happening right across the NBA. And you need to be on top of it. And the best place for you to be on top of it, I think, or I hope, is at least by being uh, on this channel, on the audio side or the video side. So thumb it up, double bang it, leave your comments down below, and hopefully you don't miss anything. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.